Hello, Avianers. Welcome back to A Taste of Adventure, a six-part series where we're talking to Feast on Chefs about their favorite restaurants, recipes, and local products. Thanks for joining us today through the Avion Collection, an ever-growing catalog of exclusive value, insider tips, and unique experiences just for Avioners. My name is Agatha Pogorski. Through my work with the Culinary Tourism Alliance, I've spent the last 10 years exploring the undiscovered corners of Canada, meeting with chefs, farmers, and artisans, trying to define what makes Canadian food so special. We run a program called Feast On. It's a program that helps chefs source and celebrate Ontario food, and in turn, helps you make better restaurant choices when you visit. Hello, everyone. Our guest today is basically a wizard. Aaron Hatchell works his magic as lead bartender at Langdon Hall in Cambridge, Ontario. He's been brewing potions while leading Langdon Hall's cocktail program since 2015. Hello, Aaron. Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm great. I'm really excited to be back at the bar, to tell you the truth. I think this is going to be a really good segment. I think so, too. I'm excited to make some cocktails. Perfect. So before we dive into our master class on Canadian cocktails today with you, tell me what drew you to bartending? I've always loved bartending because you can really get into creating new ingredients, uh, being able to kind of like put on a show for everyone, as well as being able to be creative and use like the local produce, especially being at Langdon Hall. We get to use uh, the great garden uh, that our lovely head gardener, Mario, uh, gets to give us all the great stuff from. So I know the team at Langdon Hall is really committed to experience. Visiting is always something unique and memorable. Um, that beautiful garden you mentioned is such a special place. Tell me a little bit about what someone can expect in terms of the food and drink experience at Langdon Hall. Yeah, so we're definitely super excited about our garden space that we always have. Everything coming up in the spring, harvesting things, pickling for winter. Being able to just experience the garden, one, as a guest, and then you also are kind of immersed with all of the chefs and bartenders that get to go out there and pick all of the great produce, uh, and then we get to use them. As well, I'm so excited. I really love uh, botany and flowers, so being able to go and cut our flowers that we use for garnish uh, or any of the fresh herbs is super amazing. And I think Langdon Hall is so unique because there's not many other properties that you can go where... As a guest, you go and can see literally your bartender going and picking exactly what you're going to be drinking that night. It's a really cool experience. So Aaron, take us on an adventure today. Show us some classic Canadian cocktails. So first we're gonna start with our base ingredients, everything that we are gonna to need to make all these cocktails. So we're gonna start by making a classic syrup. Uh, we're gonna do a blackberry and sage syrup. So we got some frozen blackberries because it's winter. We are pick picked at uh, peak freshness. And then we got some sage from the garden as well. And we're just going to put that right in our mason jar. And then now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cover this with sugar. And then we're going to seal it and set it to the side overnight. Obviously, I did this in advance. And then we're going to have our lovely blackberry and sage syrup. Uh, so this is going to be used uh, for one of the cocktails today. And then we're also going to make another thing. So basically, when you take this syrup, if you take half of a cup of it, and you're gonna add two ounces of local apple cider vinegar. That's gonna give you a drinking vinegar, which gives you some great acidity for one of your cocktails as well. Amazing, I've never heard of a drinking vinegar. Tell me more. So drinking vinegars are actually used a lot more now in uh, cocktail culture. Uh, it's a great way to use acidity in cocktails that you're not bringing all the lemons and limes from like California or Mexico. We can actually use local ingredients that we have to create that acidity in your cocktail because every cocktail you're always going to want your acidity your sweetness and then obviously your alcohol uh, so we can use so many local great produce uh, like local apple cider vinegar from niagara uh, to create that acidity in our cocktail Aaron, i'm not gonna lie to you i miss having other people make me a drink it's one of the thousand reasons why restaurants are so such special places um, i can't wait to come back to langdon hall and sit at your bar but in the meantime, do you have any tips for recreating that bar experience at home? So there's a couple of things you can do. You can either take some virtual classes, which is always fun, uh, or you can obviously make some great ingredients at home that are super easy. You can make some really great syrups out of just equal parts sugar and water, and you can infuse them with whatever tea you have at home. So everyone always has tea at home, so you can use that Earl Grey or green tea, and that's gonna give you a completely unique flavor profile that is going to make your cocktails taste that much more amazing. 
You can use them in great cocktails like a daiquiri. Just switch out the regular simple syrup, and you're going to use one of your tea syrups, and that will make your cocktail. It'll transport you to wherever you want to go. It sounds absolutely magical. Let's let's make a drink. Okay, great. So first, we're going to make a classic cocktail. It's a highball. Uh, one of the easiest cocktails that you'll probably ever make because it's super easy. Uh, we're going to start with some uh, whiskey, which is delicious. This whiskey is uh, Bareface Whiskey. It's actually produced in Toronto, but then it's uh, aged out in BC with uh, from Mission Hill uh, Winery Barrels. Uh, so we're going to do that. We're going to add a full ounce of the whiskey right in the bottom there. And then we're going to use our blackberry and sage syrup, and we're going to add a full ounce of that as well. And now we're going to fill it with ice, just to give it a good chill, and you're going to want to get a little dilution in there as well. Give that a little stir to mix it up. And now for our acidity and effervescence, we're going to add tonic water. So tonic water is a great thing to use, one, for effervescence to get those nice bubbles, uh, and then also it will give you a little bit of acidity uh, as well. We'll just give that a nice little stir. And that is your highball, and then all we're gonna do is garnish it really quick, so we're obviously just gonna use things like our blackberries, and then sage, we just have one like leaf here. And to get the most scent out of your sage, all you're gonna wanna do is just give a little tap, and then the essential oils are gonna come right up to the top there. And then you're gonna smell that sage more and you're gonna taste it more as well uh, in your cocktail. So this is a lovely blackberry and sage whiskey highball. Amazing, I definitely feel like I can do that at home. Okay, okay, I'm, lear I'm learning some things, but we're gonna step it up a notch, I think, with the next one, right? That's right. So right now we're gonna make kind of a riff on one of my favorite cocktails. It's based off of the daiquiri, which is super simple. It's just traditionally rum, lime juice, and simple syrup, but we're obviously gonna take it up a notch. We're gonna use, we're gonna still stick with rum, but we're gonna to stick to something actually that is out east as well. We're gonna use uh, fortress rum, uh, which is a darker rum, um, which is a little bit different than a normal traditional daiquiri. So we're gonna switch it up and we're gonna kind of make a sour, which is based off of the daiquiri as well. So we're gonna actually start, this is gonna be a lovely shaken cocktail. We're gonna start with our fortress rum. We're gonna do an ounce and a half. And then we're gonna add, obviously, our lime juice. We're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, freshly squeezed. Then we're gonna use our syrup, uh, blackberry sage syrup that uh, is so versatile. So we're gonna do, again, three quarters of an ounce, nice and easy for you. And the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna ice this up and then we're gonna actually add powdered egg white. So traditionally people like to use egg white in cocktails with that nice froth, uh, it gives a nice texture as well. I really like to use powdered egg white because one, you're not gonna get that wet dog smell. That's a little bit off-putting to some people. That's not like a gloopy mess uh, and it works really well. And you can get it just about anywhere like Bulk Barn or anything like that. Amazing, I've never heard of raw eggs in cocktails. This is, this is an exciting development for me. Yeah, so raw eggs and cocktails are used quite a bit, actually. In the classic flip cocktail, you actually use the entire egg. Uh, it's not my personal favorite, but I really love using egg whites. We're going to obviously give this a nice shake, hard shake. Now we're going to get a nice fist coop. Strain that out. Oh, it looks so pretty. Yeah. And then we're just going to garnish simply with a wedge of lime. That way, if you want to add a little bit more acidity, you can just squeeze that lime right in. It should be perfect, but some people like it a little more tart than others. The whiskey we were using earlier um, was, was from BC, and we know it was aged in Toronto. Is there somewhere in Canada right now that's doing cocktails really well and you wish you were sitting at their bar? Yes, there's actually so many great bartenders out east in uh, Halifax. So where I would go right now, if I could just hop on a plane and go and get away and enjoy some time at a bar, I would go to the Ostrich Club and visit my good friend, Lindsay Jones. Uh, she is amazing at making cocktails and I am dying for one of her amazing beverages. 
<laughs> amazing. I'm dying for one of your amazing beverages, but you're going to show us another one um, right now. So this cocktail we're going to make is one of my favorites as well. Uh, we're going to make a classic Sazerac, but we're going to make it a little bit different uh, because I love to do that. Uh, so we're going to take uh, a lovely martini group here. And we have some Dylan's absinthe. So we're just going to put a little bit in that glass there and just give it a nice little rinse around. And then we're just going to dump the excess. And then now what we have, we're just going to light the absinthe on fire. Because who doesn't like fire? So it's on fire right now. And we're going to take a lemon zest and we're really going to just express the oils. And the oils are going to bring up the fire a little bit. And we're just going to let that sit with our lemon zest in there while we make our cocktail. So traditionally, a Sazerac is made with rye, uh, but we are going to do something a little bit different. We have Willabong gin here that's actually aged in oak. So you can use it in those cocktails that are normally made with some type of whiskey. So we're going to use this. We're going to do two ounces of our Willabong gin. And then for our sweetening agent, we're going to use uh, some delicious Ontario maple syrup. We're going to do half an ounce of that in there. And then now to switch this one up, usually you're going to use Angostura bitters uh, and Peixotes bitters for a classic Sazerac, but we're just going to kind of go rogue and use whatever we want. I'm going to add some different fruity flavors uh, to this cocktail. We're going to use little pe Peixotes, keep it a little bit classic, and then I'm going to add some plum bitters. Now we're just gonna ice up our vessel, get it nice and cold. We're gonna stir it. Usually you wanna stir this cocktail for about 30 revolutions to get it cold enough and reach that dilution. Sometimes it takes a little bit of practice too to get the stirring technique, but if you're at home, no one's there to judge you, it's totally fine. Then all we're gonna do is we're gonna strain this cocktail right into our martini coupe, and then you're ready to go. You've got your lovely aged gin Sazerac. Amazing. Um, I think the first thing I need to do is add cocktail hour to my <laughs> regimen <Yes. laughs> every day of the week. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what's your drink then? What are you ordering when you're sitting at the bar? So I like to do, I like to keep it simple and classic. I'll either order a Negroni or a old fashioned because they're super simple to make. And if any bartender can make me one that's delicious, and I'm happy to drink any cocktail that they are willing to serve me. I am also a big fan of the Negroni and can often be found sipping on one at the bar. So it, it seems like great minds think alike. Erin, thank you so much for joining me today. This was an absolute pleasure. I cannot wait to sit down and maybe maybe share a Negroni with you when it's safe to do so at Langdon Hall when this is all over. Yes, I can't wait to have you. Thanks again for joining us through the Avion Collection. If you'd like to learn more about Feast On, we encourage you to explore ontarioculinary.com. And of course, for more Taste of Adventure episodes, head to rbcrewards.com slash Collection.